Hello and welcome to News Click. US, UK and France launched airstrikes in Syria uh, on the 13th of April targeting what they called sites of chemical weapons manufacturing. About uh, 100 or so missiles were launched and these strikes have been supported by NATO as well. So to discuss the situation in Syria and the international escalating tensions, we have with us today Prabir Purkayasa, the editor-in-chief of News Click. So Prabhi, the first question is that what really do, uh, you know, what is the situation we're heading to today, uh, heading to after these strikes? Are we getting closer to a war? Well, you know, this is the difficult question today because obviously airstrikes in Syria against which Russians have already given warnings that they will take action, they will respond, means that we are getting into uncharted territory. And this is probably, uh, shall we say, the most fraught confrontation between two major nuclear powers, United States and Russia, in the world, probably after the Cuban blockade, which is where the earlier nuclear standoff had taken place. This is most, the most dangerous point in human history. Because if as it escalates into war between uh, NATO and US, uh, the NATO and Russia, China and uh, uh, Iran, mm. NATO on one side, the US on that side and Russia, China and Iran. We are obviously close to a global, uh, shall we say, end of civilization. Mm. So I think we are into a very, very difficult situation as of now. The important part of it is that it does appear that back channel discussions did take place mm. to limit the number of strikes to limit the areas to be struck and therefore not targeting areas where the Russian forces could be there mm -hmm. and Russian soldiers installations could be hit. I think that is one thing that seemed to have negotiated. Mm -hmm. The second is it's also a very limited strike. We had about mm -hmm. 59 missiles we hit one of the targets about uh, six or eight months back. Mm -hmm. This time it's about 100. That seems to be the number that we are seeing. And they have also hit limited targets. There are two strikes in Homs, which is one of the places where they have been arguing there are chemical facilities, again, completely unproven. And the second is near Damascus, yeah. where again, they have argued that the Ghouta strike could have originated from there. Yeah. So these are the three sites which seem to have been hit. The missiles seem to have come from Mediterranean, where the US NATO forces are there. It seems from two ships over there, also from Al Tanaf, which is, as you know, within Syria and is under US troops occupation, NATO occupation. And in fact, that's also the other illegal part of it, that Syria has not invited them to be there. The US troops are there. And why they are there and what authority they are there is open to question. So I think we are seeing a very dangerous escalation, but at the moment held back by the fear that it could turn into a general war mm -hmm. and therefore both sides at least are limiting the aggression that they are showing. Mm -hmm. Other part of it I think which is important is that what was not attacked. Okay. The Russian air base in Hamimim was not attacked. Mm -hmm. The Tartus naval base was not attacked. And these are protected by the S-300, S-400 missile uh, intercept and interception systems. So that also seems to have given the data forces pause that they should not go beyond the point. Yeah. Then the ones that uh, have been launched, a number of them, according to Russian sources, have been intercepted. Yeah. And this is really using relatively older S-125, S-200 uh, uh, air uh, defense uh, installations that Syrian Air Force has. Mm -hmm. So there, they, how many have got through what has been the damage, how many people have died, are all open to question. Mm -hmm. Is this just some saber rattling? Mm -hmm. Is it sort of trying to make Trump look good for a domestic uh, audience? Is it something which is to distract attention from the crisis that, for instance, Netanyahu has in Israel, Trump has in the United States, Theresa May may be having over there. These are all open questions. What's the purpose of the strikes mm -hmm. when obviously there is not much of a military purpose mm -hmm. as we can see now? Mm -hmm. Will they escalate fur further? Will there be more strikes? We don't know at the moment. So I think it's still a wait and watch kind of scenario. What we do see is I think two major uh, escalations which have taken place. One is 
no attempt to get to the base of what the issue was. Hmm. Was there really a chemical uh, weapons, weapons, weapons yeah. attack in uh, Ghouta? Hmm. Is it true that it was there was an incident, chemical weapons incident, hmm. or release of chemical, shall we say, uh, gases, chlorine, sarin, all of this are being claimed in, in Ghouta? Or was it a complete manufactured incident? A. Hmm. B. If some attack did take place or some release of toxic gases did take place. Was it because there are also chlorine factories, toxic gases factories which the, the, uh, the rebels had, the rebels in this case is Al-Qaeda, mm. against whom the United States itself has released advisories saying that for instance in Idlib rebels are known to have chemical weapons, uh, US citizens must take uh, precautions, shouldn't go to these places, shouldn't go to Syria. They have also admitted that mm. rebels have in Aleppo, for instance, used chemical weapons. So having said that, why would they decide that they, this is entirely a Syrian government operation yeah. is not clear. OPCW has not investigated this. Mm. So there are again those kind of issues are there. In fact, the inspectors were supposed to be in Ghouta, yeah, uh, just about to be there. Yeah. So why was, why was this preemptive strike as it were done? So international opinion or international sanction, United Nations has not taken a decision. So this is an illegal act of war by what is declared as what is a legal act and what's an illegal act. Mm -hmm. So this is an illegal act of war. If we look at the domestic laws, the US general deposing in front of the uh, congressional committee claimed it was to protect US forces in Syria. Mm -hmm. Now US forces in Syria are there illegally anyway. So how is that a justification? Justification is not clear. Mm -hmm. The second is what Theresa May did not do. Theresa May did not go to parliament and seek approval. Mm -hmm. So this is again an unilateral decision by the governments without consulting the con Congress in the United States or the parliament in the, in the UK, case of UK. So these are, I think, violations of domestic laws, violation of international laws, because this is obviously an act of war mm -hmm. by any reckoning. The fact it is not spiraled into a bigger confrontation right now is something that that's just, as I, as I said, does not uh, change the basic uh, illegality of the act. Yeah. Can it be contained? We have to see. And, uh, what has been the response of the global community to these strikes now? NATO as a whole has not participated in the strike. It is really three countries which has participated in the strike. The fact is the global opinion Given the fact this is a, it's not a bilateral issue, it's not an issue between five countries, mm. it's or six countries. It is really something that con confronts the entire globe. Any nuclear exchange means the end of human civilization. Mm. Compared to that, we seem to be extremely passive. The global community, all the countries, the global media, mm. they're all passively reporting, this is what the US says, Russia does not agree. This is what they are going to say. And the complete, shall we say, silence on the consequences of this. Mm. So this is, I think, an unusual situation where the global community as nations seem to be extremely passive. And all of us, seven billion of humanity, who face extinction if a nuclear exchange takes place, are also quiet. This is very unlike, for instance, what happened before the Iraq war, hmm. where there was a massive protest all across the globe hmm. about the war in Iraq and said, hands of Iraq. Of course, it did go down completely after the invasion took place. But nevertheless, there was a protest. Hmm. We are entering into a situation where any propaganda by the West hmm. is taken as de facto as the truth. There is no attempt to investigate that, mm. no contrary views are entertained and you have a complete resonance within the global big players mm. in the media that whatever the United States, the UK uh, or the NATO powers say is the truth and no evidence needs to be produced. Yeah, everyone seems to have accepted that there were chemical attacks in Syria and so the reasoning of these attacks is correct. That it needs to be checked, this is, is this true? And the second that we shouldn't so cavalierly marching into a situation which can lead to global war. Mm. This is completely unthinkable. And as you can see, even countries like India are actually keeping quiet as if it is something that doesn't concern them. So this is the, to me, the irony of the situation that something that should concern all of us, mm. we are so, shall we say, passive about it, so 
quiescent about it, completely complicit with our silence, as it were. And that, I think, is something deeply worrying to all of us who at least think that the global community should be much more active in preventing wars. So thank you, Prabhu, for joining us in this discussion. And thank you for watching this clip.